You know, a story that's not making many headlines outside of Israel itself, but one that may have significant impacts as it comes to Bible prophecy. We will dive in and discuss in just a second. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Very important. Also, please share the video. Guys, without you sharing these videos, they're not going to get many views. So help us get around those algorithms with the sharing. Also, hit the bell, subscribe, wear the glasses because I'm blind. And guys, if you enjoy my work here and you were able to help contribute to my ministry with a generous donation, a couple different ways you could do that. One, simply click the super thanks down below on this video here. That's how you can do a one-time donation. Also, you can join my Patreon family for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash conservative truth. I set a goal for the month of April trying to get five new patrons. We're at four so far, but we're still looking for one more, guys, and we're almost here to the end of the month. So help me hit this goal. Also, guys, we missed that goal for March, so we're trying to rebound from that. And with my Patreon, you get the alerts for all my videos. Very important. If you only watch my videos through the YT alerts, I guarantee you're missing a ton of content. They do not send out all notifications. So get on over to my Patreon for that, where also you can comment on all the videos completely censorship-free. You can send me direct messages. And as a bonus, a lot of people ask me, they said, hey, can you do video talking about how you went blind? How do you even operate your entire ministry without being able to see? I answer all those questions and more. The video is getting some good reaction. Check it out if you haven't seen it already. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So I was surprised that this is a major headline. And you said it's not getting picked up in the United States or really anywhere else. And really, if you think about it, in the last days, all eyes are going to be on Israel. So this is going to be the epicenter for what will be, you know, all that prophecy says is going to happen in the last days. And this is significant to me because the exiled Iranian crown prince, Reza Pahlavi, arrived in Israel, touched down in Israel. And what did he do? He met with Benjamin Netanyahu and he was talking about wanting to see a peace deal. I'm sorry, doesn't the Bible say something about a peace deal coming into play in the last days? Oh, one that lasts, what, seven years? That's exactly what the Bible says. Now, for this Iranian crown prince, again, he was exiled. He was out here in Israel. He was denouncing Iran, and he was talking about how there needs to be freedom. There needs to be progress, right? There needs to be peace between the two nations, of Iran and Israel. He even talked about how there is significant biblical ties between the two countries. In fact, he even called this peace deal that he wants to see, which I thought was very interesting. He called it, he wants to call it the Cyrus Accords. Oh, remember how everybody was referring to Trump as the modern day King Cyrus? Now you have the Iranian crown prince also making a reference to Cyrus. Now, Not only does he want to create the peace deal, but Reza, Crown Prince Reza, was also talking about wanting to help facilitate the rebuilding of the Third Temple. Now, of course, we know if you look at prophecy, what that Third Temple will represent. The Jews have been wanting to rebuild their Third Temple for so long now, and they already have everything that's necessary in order to make this happen. They have all the materials. It would not take them very long to construct it. They're even getting together the red heifers, which the Bible talks about as well, which will be a part of this third temple. If you go deeper into prophecy, we know that around the three and a half year mark, the Antichrist is going to walk into that third temple, right? And he's going to declare himself to be God. So it's interesting to me that Crown Prince Reza is wanting to help facilitate the building of this third temple. Could it be, and I'm not saying that it is, but could it be that the crown prince, Reza Pahlavi, is a contender for the Antichrist? Again, it's not being talked about. It, 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 talk about something that would be astounding, right? A, a, a former, you know, Iranian crown prince emerges as the one, right? A young crown prince emerges as the one to be the eventual Antichrist could be facilitating things right now and nobody even realizes it. Now, also, we know that a two-state solution is going to have to come into play here when it comes to the third temple being designed. I believe this is all going to be 
how it comes together. And now Benjamin Netanyahu is prime minister again. A lot of people said that he would never divide the land. The Bible says specifically, do not divide the land of Israel. But I believe that he will. And this visit now by the Iranian crown prince could help to move that along even further. If you take a look at somebody who was a part of a regime, and we know how tyrannical Iran is, right? But now he's doing what? He's, he was exiled by his own country. Now he's championing peace. He's championing progress. He's championing liberty. This is someone that people will listen to. This is somebody that appears to be a decent guy. But could there be great deception behind it? Remember what the Bible also says, that when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. And I've also always believed this. This is just my personal thought that whoever the Antichrist would be, would be a Muslim. That is what the crown prince is, okay? Because you would then get, you know, obviously Muslims to trust him as it are Mahadi if you look into the Quran and how, you know, the similarities between both Christianity and Islam, you look in, you know, in terms of Bible prophecy, they're, they're pretty close. The Mahadi in Islam is the Christian's Antichrist in the Bible. So very interesting ties here. We again have to keep our eyes on Israel because this is where this is all going to go down. And I believe that as soon as that land is divided and the Antichrist, whoever it may be, whether it's this crown prince Reza or somebody else, is going to offer this seven-year peace treaty that will also allow Israel to rebuild their temple because they want to rebuild their temple. But they're going to have to give up a lot as well with that. So we need to keep an eye on this. I mean, God, you look at everything going on right now. We look at the United States. I mean, I talk about all the time. You know, the fact that the U.S. is crumbling economically, spiritually, all of this, right? All by design. But again, don't forget Israel. Okay? They are a significant key in this. And you even heard Biden being hostile towards Israel, right? And, and so this is, again, all part of even America pushing Israel away. And we know that in the last days, Israel will be standing on its own against all these nations that will come together against it, including Iran, including China, including Russia, and many others. We have to see how this all plays out. I mean, guys, we're getting close. I will put more information on this for you in the description, including the video of the crown prince there in Israel. Let me know what you think. What I want to do right now, though, something I do on all these videos, and let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines. I keep you guys up to speed and everything going on. I do it because, again, we're in the final days and Christ is coming soon. If you're somebody watching right now and you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back in your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, He'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says that he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, I'll have more on this down below. You guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget, the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. You guys can join my Patreon family. For as little as five bucks a month by going to patreon.com slash conservative truth. Help me with my goal for the month of April. We're trying to get five new patrons. We're at four right now. We're looking for one more, guys, and we're rapidly coming to the end of the month. We're also trying to rebound from the month of March, where we unfortunately missed that goal. You guys could also hit the super thanks down below in this video here to make a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.